Hello out there, and today guys, we have a very special knife in front of you because this is one of the best CRKTs I think I've ever come across. And not only that, it is one that probably a lot of people have never heard of or or ever seen before. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to talk about. But before we do, I have to give a shout out to an excellent movie, <laughs> Star Wars Rogue One. I just watched it again the other day for like the 10th time, and that movie is friggin' awesome. You guys know I'm a Star Wars nut and all that good stuff, but man, every time I watch that movie, I just get something more out of it. I've always got Jin right there looking at me while I'm making my videos, because she's just a little badass, and K2SO is arguably my favorite droid. I know it's blasphemy to say that for all you R2 fans, I get it, but like, He's the man too. So anyway, great movie, uh, but let's get back to this great knife. So here is one from CRKT that is an exclusive to Cornwell Tools. And it is a Ken Onion design, but it's one that was never mass produced by CRKT and released themselves. So the only way that you could get this was from Cornwell Tools, like through their outlets, on their website, that sort of thing. And it is a limited edition, but <laughs> take a look at that. It is a 5,000 piece limited edition, so not that limited. <laughs> it is limited though, just in that it wasn't marketed all that much by CRKT, so it's not something that a lot of people were aware of. And while this design is one that might be familiar to CRKT fans because there have been maybe one or two other models that have looked a little bit like this, there's never been something exactly like this. A a exact kind of production version of the Ken Onion Custom that's called the Jake. And so that's what this is. It's the first time that we've seen something like this in like a cheaper version. So it's it's very exciting to get and um, even though it's a Cornwell version and it's like, you know, been a little bit of a uh, endeavor to track it down, it definitely has been worth it because this is the kind of CRKT that when I think about the company, I know that they can make knives this good because they do it. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, when they do a knife like this, maybe it's not as accessible or or marketed. I mean, if people knew about this knife, they'd probably try to track it down, right? So anyway, we're going to talk about that a little bit, but I do want to go through just the particulars of the knife, the specs, the detail, size comparison, all that stuff to try to sell you on it and get you <laughs> to understand why I'm so hyped about this knife right now. So for size comparisons, let's get started with a, uh, a few things that are on the table. This knife it has a pretty broad blade here. So here it is next to the barrage. So the barrage, a little bit longer overall, maybe just a little bit of a, a longer blade for the most part, but you know, and the handle, really not too different. Let's see what else we have over here. The Super Freak is a good one to compare. Here is, well, just got stuff thrown all over the place. Where's the PM2? Because we got to do the PM2. The PM2 is actually a really good one to uh, to compare it with by size, just because um, there is maybe that slight extra bit of length in uh, the back of the PM2, but overall, not very different when it comes to the size of the knife. When we're talking about the weight, and let's keep the PM2 and let's get the weight of the PM2 as well. So 3.86 ounces, and that's a like two liners, G10 kind of deal. Here's aluminum with just a slight inset liner, almost exactly the same weight. So the way that the PM2 feels in the hand, as far as like the weight of it goes, is actually gonna be pretty similar, you know, for the size. We do have a little bit of a thickness difference though as I do that almost off camera. <laughs> so this knife does feel very, very light as we're dealing with this aluminum and, you know, again, the size of the blade. And the blade material is one that is a bit of a departure for CRKT. This is 12C27N. They've used it before, that Sandvik version, but, you know, it does just sort of, like, indicate that they're doing something a little bit nicer when they do that slight upgrade from 8CR13MOV. But the big... The big appeal of the blade is not really the steel, it is the just the look of it, the grind, and how thin this comes down. 
So, I mean, it comes down to a pretty nice thin edge, so it is a good slicer, a lot of belly. I mean, this is a, a razor sharp knife out of box, and it's a really good one to use, even though the look of it sort of says maybe not quite a user. It might be a little bit nicer than that, but every knife's a new, uh, excuse me, every knife is a user if you look at it the right way, right? So, we do have a decent amount of jimping. You can see from here that the jimping is a little bit rolled, so it's not necessarily the most grippy jimping, but it's in the right spot. So it is gonna work and, and help get you that lock in and really improve the, you know, the ergos, which are good enough as it is, to be honest. And when we look at the blade stamping, obviously for some people, this is gonna be a detriment in that, you know, you do have the nice CRKT, Ken Onion Design kind of thing on one side, but then this big uh, Cornwell Quality Tools logo. I don't know, I don't care about that stuff. And, and honestly, for me, it sort of makes it, you know, it sort of indicates that it is this kind of limited special edition. So yeah, it does cover almost half the darn blade, but I don't know, I don't, I don't really worry about that kind of stuff too much. Um, as we move on back, we have this aluminum frame and then pretty nice machining here, you know? And again, it is exactly like the Ken Onion Jake, which is a grail upon grail upon grail knife for me. So, you know, it's awesome to have it, uh, have something like that in hand, you know? And then we have this inlay and the inlay, it, it's not, I don't know that it's G10, it's a nice inlay. And again, the, the design, it mirrors this um, machining in the aluminum too. So um, so it's really good, and it is nice and grippy. I don't know exactly what the material is. If you look at it, if we look at it close and we're really particular about things, the fit and finish isn't flawless. You know, there's some spots where there's these tiny little gaps or they're just like the edges aren't perfectly flush. Um, my expectation wasn't that they would be. You know, this is a limited edition that ran, I think, between like $75 and 100 and again, that's, the Cornwell price, it's not the price that um, that you would get at like an online retailer because there was no online retailer apart from Cornwell. So, you know, they were charging their price for it. So what this knife would have gone for if it was like mass produced and on Blade HQ and stuff, I, I don't know, you know. But the point is that it's a $75 to $100 knife. And, you know, we've seen some of these other like two, three, four hundred dollar CRKT limited editions that are made in Italy. You know, those knives um, are a lot nicer than this. Uh, and you could expect a little bit more perfection from those. But this is still, you know, sort of budget materials. And so you should expect it not to be quite perfect. But honestly, the little faults and the fit and finish, not even issues, but, but nitpicky things that there are on this knife are so minor that, you know, I don't even really think about them. As we talk about the lockup, I do want to do... Um, not, I can't compare it because I don't have the knife, but I do want to talk about the CRKT that this knife most, um, most resembles, right? And it's the Prowess from a couple years ago. The Prowess is one, I don't know how long you've been watching the channel, if you've ever seen one of my videos, <laughs> but the Prowess is one that I had some big problems with. I had more issues with this knife and it strained my opinion of CRKT probably more than anything else, just my whole experience with the warranty stuff. And to, to put it uh, to put it quickly, I had lockup issues with three different versions, three different prowesses, right? And it, it was no good. And um, I really wanted to like that design because it reminded me of, of this. Uh, of this design and yeah, I, I just couldn't enjoy it. And this knife is executed completely differently. It is far superior to that. So while the prowess was one that a lot of people sort of flocked to because it was a great look by Ken Onion, um, for me, it wasn't executed well and it, it just wasn't a great knife. And I ended up having to get rid of it three different times. <laughs> and, uh, and this is one that I do not have to get rid of because the lockup is excellent. And when we look at the lockup, what we have is a liner lock that is inset. And so you can see the screws down here on the inside that screw it into the aluminum frame. So on the other side, it's just plain aluminum, you know, no liner, but it's done pretty cleanly. 
Now that, that liner is put in there very clean. The screws are on the inside, so it doesn't really mess with the, the lines of the knife and the aesthetic look. And this is a very great looking knife. You know, and as we move on back, you can see here, we have this one position pocket clip, so we're not messing with other screws on the other side. Again, focusing on the aesthetics and this being just a really good looking piece, which it definitely, definitely is. So, yeah, just impressed like 100%. And then, and then you open the thing and it's pretty nice and snappy. It feels like it could be a little bit snappier if I were to like take it apart and just tune it up and maybe clean it. Problem is, I think that the bearings, this is on IKBS, and I think that the bearings are not captured. So I think they're free floating and I don't want to deal with that crap. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to keep it as is, but it still fires pretty nice. But the best part, I mean, the knife closes very nice and smooth and now for 30 seconds of uninterrupted flipper ikbs action All right. Maybe a little bit of stick, but overall, man, I mean, it is, uh, it's doing some really good things and it's an EDC that, man, I wish, I wish CRKT would, I don't know, just do something and, and make a knife like this, uh, a more widely released run. I understand what they're doing and I know that they're making their money and, and I get it and they're not here to please JT. <laughs> They're not. I, I understand that. But, man, this is just such a cool knife that I wish more people could get their hands on. And I wish more people just knew about. You know, this is a very cool thing for the people who support Cornwell Tools that, you know, that they had this kind of limited edition. And they went all out with it. I didn't even show you the packaging. Let me show you the packaging real quick. So... Here's like the outside box, right? It has like some Cornwell history and all that kind of stuff, right? It's a big box, right? But then it comes in this like leather case. You open it up. You have your certificate of authenticity. I mean, this is legit, right? <laughs> so Cornwell made a big deal out of this. The problem is there was no one to buy the 5,000 pieces. And I don't know who the Cornwell customer is. I don't, I don't really have an understanding of what their operation is like and who is like a regular purchaser of their stuff. But they didn't buy this knife because I got this on a liquidation sale for $25 shipped. And the person who sold it had like 20 of them and was selling them for 25 bucks a piece. So that's how that was. So... As much as I like the idea, you know, and support CRKT with what they're doing, you know, I think that there are a lot more people who would appreciate a limited run from CRKT that's in this vein. You know, they've, they've brought it back and, and that run they did with the tuna just like a couple weeks ago uh, with S35VN for what was it like 180? That's a step in the right direction, right? But I mean, they could do stuff like this and full production or do a limited uh, edition, you know, whatever, sub a hundred dollars and man, that'd be a home run. You know, I know they're doing more and more stuff and I'm just hoping in my head, like encouraging them to, to keep going with it. And hopefully we'll see a design like this, you know, from them very soon again. All right, guys. So here it is. One of the best CRKTs that you never knew about until now. If you want to find one, I mean, eBay, and just keep looking and hopefully it'll pop up and you can get it at a decent price. I highly suggest you get one if you can because it is pretty darn sweet. All right. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know what your thoughts are, what you think you would pay for a knife like this. If this is a good CRKT or what else you'd be looking for from them. All right. I'll talk with you soon. Take care and have a good one.